Welcome back to the podcast, Rohit. Yeah, thanks for the invitation. Uh, my pleasure. So, um, you know, just for those who who, prob- who might not be aware of uh, exactly what Biz to Credit does, why don't you give us just a just a, just a brief description of your company? Yeah, so Biz to Credit is a fintech lending player. Uh, we have been around now for twelve years. This is our second recession that we are seeing, very different from the first one. Mm-hmm. I think there has been great learnings, uh, and also, you know, what we foresee is the world is going to change very dramatically after this crisis. Right, right, indeed it will. So then, so maybe let's just start with that. How are you? How have you adapted to you know to the challenges? I can see you're not you're not in your office at work. I know you're based in New York. So just tell us a little bit of how Business Credits adapted over the last couple of months. Yeah, so I think uh, the biggest uh, you know adjustment has been you know working remotely fully. We we are, have been a digital player from our inception, but still working so remote for everyone mm-hmm. has been a great discovery and a great learning process personally. And I think from a consumer side or from a customer side, what we have seen is a tremendous adoption of digital you know tools and self service uh, you know mindset which wasn't there earlier. And we have seen that happening with our partners also, like Paychex and some of our other critical partners. You, you know, where there the level and amount of collaboration has increased tremendously mm-hmm. over the last two to three months' time. And I think uh, there is more appreciation about you know doing things in a more digital and a more streamlined manner. So I think that has all been a positive. I think the negatives have always has been that you know in an office you have better collaboration, you can exchange more ideas, you can do more stuff and and we were really set up for that you know we we got into a very good like a great place in one pen plaza last year invested a lot of money in our new offices hoping that you know it will help us to grow our business even faster foster more innovation so i think that part you one is going to miss if, if one is not able to go back to offices soon you know right right yeah understood understood so let's um let's get right into it and talk about the the ppp i mean you're a small business yeah. lender and um, that's been sort of dominating the conversation here for the last couple of months um so why don't you just you know tell us about your experience with it and uh and what's happening today yeah so ppp program i think it's a very interesting program it started so suddenly it was not really well thought of initially a lot of confusion uh, over i think 3 4 weeks then it got better so initially we were uh, referring uh, a lot of customers thousands of customers to our banking partners and then uh, sometime in last week of april early may we got our own license to be a ppp lender and then we were also one of the first fintech players to get the fed facility also you know pretty quickly after that so what we have seen is three things you know three distinct factors one is that uh, especially among small business owners you know how quickly they adapted to being an offline from an offline mindset to being a 100% online mindset you know that was I, I would say the major discovery that even we had people who were looking for a lot of hand holding and assistance you know they they very quickly morphed to become a fully digital kind of a uh, you know i would say digitally very very savvy you know mm-hmm. overnight you know so that was a very interesting stuff the other thing that we always saw was that banks how far behind they are still on the digital journeys right you know? And we have worked with a lot of banks, you know, and the banks had to deploy like thousands and thousands of people just to process these applications. And uh, and I think eventually they did a good job, but, you know, the whole process has been very painful. And I foresee that process going to be pretty painful for them when the forgiveness program starts because they're still not very ready from a digital aspect. So I think that has been a big challenge with all the banks, you know, that have worked in this program. Mm-hmm. And we work with quite a few banks because one big challenge was that, you know, how do you integrate into something like SBA eTrans, you know, which sounded right. very simple, but SBA eTrans in itself is an old system and, and banks had no idea until we didn't become a lender ourselves, you know, we had no access to that system or the platform. Uh, so, so we saw, you know, those challenges very closely and the level of documentation and still the hoops and loops the business owners had to go through, you know, to get their, uh, you know, initial money was pretty painful actually. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think things are streamlined. Uh, I think the challenge with PPP program has been that the way it was designed initially, everybody was expecting a quick recovery. Everybody thought that end of April or early May, the economies will reopen. That hasn't happened. Uh, So I think the recent changes are trying to address that issue. That's why the PPP program has become very slow right now compared to where it was even a month back. Mm -hmm. And, And I think... People still need a lot of money. So when I'm talking to business owners, you know, 
uh, small businesses. I think COVID crisis has been a crisis which has hit small businesses disproportionately hard. In right. yeah. and, and we haven't just really seen the pain because of two reasons. One is, you know, large amount of money have come in PPP program and even a larger amount of money has come in the unemployment program you know, for the workers. I think we'll start seeing the actual pain sometime in July mm -hmm. as, as the economy reopens and the, and the government money starts to dry up. I think that's where we'll see a wave of bankruptcies. We'll see a lot of pain, you know, in the economies. Uh, so I think that's where, you know, uh, more money is required. Uh, and even I think the government has to make changes in the PPP program so that all the money that they've allocated actually gets, you know, loaned out or is given out because that's very important because right now, one thing we have to keep in mind, that's the only program in town, you know, material program in town for small businesses. Right. You know, to access to credit. There's nothing else available right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so then are you, I mean, are you, continue, are you continuing to lend today on the, in the PPP program or is it pretty much dried up? No, so we are, so we have continued lending. So one of the things that we, uh, we, we have seen is that uh, the larger of the small businesses got money from their banks. Right. But, uh, but the, but the actual small businesses actually couldn't get money from, from their banks. So we are still continuing the program. The program has like sort of stabilized. It It's not uh, growing, but also not, has not decreased. The demand has not decreased actually. Hmm. And my view is that once uh, these changes what were made uh, and passed by the Congress and gets passed by the Senate, once that happens and as the economy start reopening, I think people will need more money to right. just reopen and rerun their business because they have a lot of accumulated rent right now. They have a lot of accumulated bills and they have to pay and they're not paying it right now because obviously they're not open. Now, now once that starts happening, I think you know, the PPP money will run out pretty quickly. And actually, there's, there'll be need for even more money uh, because every other program, meaningful program in small business lending is right now shut down. Right, right. So that, that brings me to my next point. My next question is, so are you, are you doing any other lending outside the PPP? We are doing a small... Uh, so I think unlike a lot of other players, we haven't totally shut down our traditional lending programs. But obviously, like everybody else, we have to be very cautious. You know, we're right. only into essential services businesses. We are only lending to businesses which are, you know, in states which have reopened, like in New York, you know, everything is still shut down. So lending money to a retail business in New York doesn't make any sense. Uh, so I think we we have made a, made a start. We are starting to see uh, the investor appetite to start coming back, you know, mm -hmm. a bit. So that's a good news. I think what what is going to really happen is that over next four weeks, are, are very critical right? because as we reopen the 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 markets and the economy, you know whether the infection rate will go up or will will remain same will really really decide the sentiment in the market, and also you know whether investors will want to come back because the good news is that interest rates are at a historic low. A lot of mm -hmm. investors are looking to invest money right now. You know we are getting call from very large asset managers who, who want to be fully ready to lend money when things come back, but at the same point of time there's a lot of caution right now, you know, that people don't want to jump the gun too much right. while they're be ready as soon as the economy fully reopens. You know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. So, so I know that um, I, I always, I get your emails um, and you're all, you're often, um, you're tracking approval rates and yes. that's, yes. Um, that's something yes. that you, you've been yes. doing for many years now. So yes. maybe uh, I'd be curious to get, if you could share with the audience, what sort of, what's been happening with approval rates. I mean, obviously there's not a whole lot of lending happening beyond the PPP, but, but how is, how, how were approval rates trending in 2020? So non PPP approval rates are at a historic low right now. Right. They're very even worse than the, you know, like we started our approval rate tracking in 2011 and they are worse off. And so today what has also happened, unlike in 2011 or just after the last crisis is that even the alternative lending has dried up, you know, right. more or less. Uh, so I think that's a double whammy because not only banks are not, because banks have suspended all kind of other lending program, even 7A right now hmm. is old. So 7A, mm -hmm. is, uh, we are expecting it to start coming back sometime in June because if you, See in this country, you know, small banks, small to mid-sized banks are very active as BA7A lenders, you know, out there. And they and they got very busy in the PPP program. So they also have not done like very little lending in 7A. Uh, I'm hoping they will start coming back because government has made the SBA7A program a lot more attractive for borrowers as well as for banks. I don't see, except for 7A program, 
a lot of lending coming back till the time that the economy is reopen mm-hmm. alternative lending i think there is a there's a lot of hunger among investors but a lot of the players the large players in this space have already you know stopped lending and some of them are facing a lot of their own challenges because there are a lot of these balance sheet risks and uh, and they are having event of defaults right now and i think for them it will it will be very tough for them to emerge out of that you know in their former after i think a lot of them will be either totally shriveled or they won't be able to restart lending anytime soon right. i think it's interesting to see that uh, bank lending is going to be down alternative lending platforms a lot of them are suffering and uh, while big asset managers are now looking at this space uh, but i think next in my view next 2 to 3 months are going to be pretty challenging in the in the in the approval rates and the lending space for this. right and so i mean obviously we know that many of the non bank lenders have been shut down now for for some time but there you know, there's still there's some like yourself that are still yeah. lending um is there so are you seeing what what you're seeing like for approval rates are approval rates even worse for non-bank lenders than for banks right now oh yeah oh yeah 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 so at on a on a percentage level actually non-bank lenders are performing a lot worse than even banks today because what has happened is for a lot of them their own credit facilities have been frozen or in the security right. market is done with and uh, and there's a lot more caution on that side so obviously their approval rates are very very low the other thing what has also happened is that a lot of good businesses who would traditionally borrow from alternative lenders have got ppp money right so they're not coming into the market to borrow money right now for next few months because they have the ppp money and they want to first ensure that they spend that so a lot of the people who will come into the market right now to borrow are the weakest of the businesses or in the sectors which have got impacted the most where you know you cannot do that kind of lending so that's another reason why you know the approval rates have gone down because uh, prior to the crisis in last 2 3 years you know a lot of good main street businesses had made a migration towards alternative lenders and they were the ones who were actually powering a lot of this alternative lending boom mm-hmm. and and once they got the ppp money and there is very little economic activity so they have no reason to borrow money right now because they have no place to invest and uh, and get the return on their money uh, so so that's the other reason why the approval rates in the alternative lending space are a lot less than even banks right right okay that makes sense so you know you've been around in this space for for longer than just about anybody uh, in the small business lending space so how do you how do you um think this is going to change the small business lending landscape particularly i'm talking about the non bank lenders how do you see it changing you know you know in the, in the medium to long term yeah so i see three very distinct uh, you know trends happening one was you know that i've been always been a proponent of you know very good risk management you know even during good times so so one stat that you know we have been sharing with the market has been that uh, the defaults on our platform have never exceeded more than 3 and a half percent you know compared mm-hmm. to more publicly traded you know uh, folks where the default rates were in double digits so one thing i've always uh, said and stressed has been that you know you need to be good at risk management you need to be good at collecting money back during good times because if you don't do that then it will come and haunt you back during bad times right. so 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 we have seen a rise in uh, in uh, in in like you know modifications we have seen a rise in people you know wanting to reduce their payments on our platform pretty significantly but we didn't see defaults where, and there was few reasons behind that one was obviously that you know a lot of these merchants or these customers you know we work with them directly because we don't accept anything through brokers you know not iso right. you know sure uh, the second thing was that you know we we were in constant touch with them even prior to the crisis all the time so like i think that helped us because we have been using a lot of these tools on cash flow and even helping them with that and i think uh, so that's one very distinct trend that if you don't invest in risk management you don't invest in your back office you don't invest in you know the ways how you will not just you know lend money but how you will get your money back you know then you know that trend is over now where you know alternative lenders can just get a lot of capital out there and then they can just keep lending money so i right. think i think i think that's changing dramatically i think the second trend uh, which is very much focused on the first trend and i think that has changed because alternative lending in the vc world is not hot anymore and no. and, and it has not been hot for last 3 4 years you know mm-hmm. as because of some of the performance in the public markets and other things i think the challenge for a lot of these players in the in the fintech lending space has been is that they have been running businesses where the unit economics were very negative 
actually and and that is coming home now you know so and that is like you know creating a lot of this problem uh, among a lot of players because they have run out of equity you know so all the money even if they have on their balance sheet is just credit lines and all that and and for them to get, raise any more equity capital in the market right now especially if you are a like alternative lender whether you are fintech non fintech it doesn't matter it's next to impossible right now right. for next 6 months it's not going to happen uh so i think people who don't have much equity or who have been running business at a loss you know uh, are seeing a lot of trouble and pain you know right now so 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 we are starting to see a lot of consolidation in the market a very interesting you know figure we are seeing is that you know as we are going back into the market uh, for our digital say, originations we are seeing cost of acquisitions have dropped by 80 85% wow 80 85% yeah, exactly because there's like you know people cannot even have money to you know do any lending or to and if they can't do lending they cannot or they don't want to acquire any any customers so mm-hmm. so 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 that has happened i think the third big trend that is going to happen now is that you know uh, the fintech players and actually the banks in my view you know the partnerships are going to get strengthened so i think i've been propagating that uh, you know that okay banks will go digital and they haven't really done it you know till now i think now uh, it's not a question of bank going digital i think the convergence will speed up you know actually. right yeah. and uh, and that's going to happen because of you know uh, i think more than one third of the branches will will just shut down you know i can already see that in manhattan you know manhattan is overbanked you know island out there but i can already see a lot of branches actually shut down permanently banks have put notices out there that they've shut down these branches forever actually already uh, i can see that happening across the country and i and i can also see that you know uh, the fixed cost have to go down you know tremendously i think for fintechs also it, it becomes very imperative that they're not the new thing in the you know in the marketplace so the so the days when they can go and raise any kind of vc money or equity money is gone mm-hmm. you know uh, so the consolidation is happening uh, you know good fintechs will still be able to raise a lot of money but i think that will be far and few and and i think that's where it will become very important for fintechs to start behaving more like you know banks in the financial metrics and banks to start behaving more like fintechs in their innovation you know kind right of right and i think i think that banks got a wake up call with the the ppp because a lot of them were just uh were not really ready for it, particularly the smaller banks and i know a lot of them yeah. partnered partnered with others but um but i want to talk it's a perfect segue into sort of the your biz to your biz to x product which yes. is uh your banking product why don't you just just to firstly just describe exactly exactly what that is yeah so two years back you know what what we were getting a lot of inquiries from banks and non banks you know uh, because they they were saying that uh, so this regard as a company we have built our own platforms in house platforms over the years we got all the global patents on it and all that stuff so uh, so banks were coming to us and we said you know why don't we offer that as a platform and a data science play and then we formed another entity bisto x and we started offering it so now we have clients like hsbc bank of popular customers bank and some other banks out here and we thought you know that could be a very good business obviously last two years has been you know not that easy because we got good traction but still banks have been very slow as you know they are not easy animals to deal with you know in a way uh, but i think all the investments that we have now made into bis to x platform where we are offering it as a platform and a data play and even credit you know play all three i think is actually very interesting now because what that is starting to do finally is that you know in the ppp program we saw a lot of interest from banks to partner with us and use our digital technologies and which we gave for free because we we didn't want to charge anything for that but but at the same point of time you know we are starting to see a lot of inquiries coming in because banks are worried you know because if the next uh, wave of the crisis comes in uh, the covid crisis then that's going to be very bad and even if it doesn't come in you know they have realized that the customers have become digital ready and they cannot afford to have any branches because branches have been really ineffective during this crisis you know more or less right. uh, so so they are saying how do we go digital and the conversations that i am having with my banking partners and a lot of other banks in last few weeks now we will have to see how it translates into reality but uh, the the conversations have been that digital is not an option for us digital is the is the only option you know kind of stuff Mm-hmm. so i think they're making right noises now it will all depend on how it pans out because a lot of time banks have a habit of you know let's say this virus just vanishes in next two weeks time you know let's say i think banks have a habit of just going back and reverting to the mean 
but I don't think so that will happen 100% because the customers have now got so used to it and a lot of people are right. not willing to go out and, and go into a branch anymore. They're scared. Yeah. Right. And, that, and that's going to take some time. That, that's not going to change I mean, until we have a vaccine that's broadly available, which, you know, it yeah. could be a year or more. So who knows? So I feel like, you know, they're going to be forced their hand. They'll uh, be forced. Yeah. yeah to, to really. And, and so they'll be. So are you expecting that, you know, are you going, you know, you said you've been talking to banks. Now you've got, you've got a few, a few banks on board, but are you expecting the next 12 months to sort of accelerate a lot of the conversations you're having? Yeah, so I think one thing with the PPP program good has been that banks have realized the value of digital platforms. Right. They've also realized that how old their existing LOS systems and LMS systems are. And they have really struggled with that. You know, I know banks, large banks, I've talked with them that did they even can do an SBA e-trans integration. And the reason was not, it was difficult. They said our own backend systems are so antiquated that, you know, they don't even support APIs. So, so sorry, we couldn't do it. Right. And yeah, so they were manually typing everything into into the SBA e-tran. So I think uh, that's going to happen. I think the other thing that's going to happen in my view in US is that there's going to be a tremendous amount of consolidation in the banking space will come right. in. Mm -hmm. uh, because I think right now the government stimulus money has delayed the pain. But this pain will, is going to come. You know, the wave of bankruptcies is going to come among businesses. Loan delinquencies are going to go up quite a bit, you know, uh, because the economy is in, has got a real shock. And that shock has not been really transmitted. The government has really tried to block that shock for the time being, but it's going to eventually come. Now that clearly means that there's going to be a tremendous amount of consolidation in the banking space. It means that they have to invest more money in technology. They will have to deleverage their branch network pretty quickly. And that also means that, you know, they will have to find ways and means to serve the customers in a more remote fashion, which they're not really used to doing today. Right. Right, right. I, th I know. I see. That's one of the big trends that's really going to change. So, um, I know you touched on it, but I just want to talk about your um, your Accelerate SBA program yes, that yes. you that you provided for banks. I mean, maybe just describe it and um, and how you've implemented that program so quickly. Yeah. So one of the things we did was that you know we figured out we we were already working with payroll companies, so we figured out you, during this program that payroll data has become the most valuable piece of data actually in the PPP program. So we actually went ahead and developed full-fledged APIs with paychecks, ADPs, and other folks, and also did a partnership with Plaid also. And then, you know, we rolled out a cloud-based platform in, in the SB Accelerate program, we, which we gave it for free, you know, during this program, because we, we, we thought there's no point in charging for this, you know, kind of a product or a service. And, and we said that some banks adopted, some banks adopted it, some banks really liked it, but couldn't adopt it because again, of their own challenges, you know, in this space. But I think what it has done is that, you know, it has helped them to understand that what digital really means or, or how to do things in a more smarter and a, and a better fashion and also at greater speed. I think agility and speed that, you know, a fintech will bring or a cloud offering will bring in. I think that has been an eye opener for a lot of banks. And I think for us uh, also, you know, the key thing is that banks are, are still going to be banks. You know, they will still take their time for uh, because a lot of them were not able to use the platform, not because they didn't like it, because their whole still process of onboarding someone, even for a free platform, takes some time. You know, actually. <laughs> so, so I think I think they're also starting to realize, and a lot of these banks are now very keen to take advantage of the SBA 7A programs, and they're coming back to us and saying that okay, you know, this is good. You know, I can I can can we leverage you for that, or can we leverage you for our other you know products? So with some banks. You know, we are talking to launch some merchant financing products now once the crisis and because there's going to be a tremendous need for working capital, especially among the retail businesses, because they have been hit the hardest. You know, in the right, circle. right. So do you think then down the road, like the, the SBA 7A program, which is which is you know, probably the most popular program there, um, is is that going to become much more digitized? Do you mean, I imagine it, or, I mean, for, given that the, these banks, every, every 7A lender pretty much has, has been a, a PPP lender. Yes. So they've, um, you know, they've, they've, they've had to move much, much quicker than they, they, than they have in the past. Do you think then when they go back to, when 7A lending really kicks in again, do you think they're going to take some of those learnings from the PPP and really make a much more streamlined process? Uh, I think that's a good question because what the government is doing and they do it after every recession is that they try to make 7A program a lot more attractive for both the borrowers as well as for the lenders for a certain period of time. Mm -hmm. It's not an infinite period of time. So it's like on an average six months to a year. 
and the Trump administration has done it till the end of this year. Uh, so my view on that is that yes, some of the banks will actually take advantage of it. Some of the banks will want to go digital. I think part of the challenge also is SBA. SBA itself is so antiquated as an agency, you know, that for them to go, part of it is that, you know, do they really want to go digital, you know? But I think uh, quite a few banks really want to digitize their workflows and want to digitize their onboarding processes and ongoing, you know, because you also need to do a lot of monitoring for these SBA loans. Uh, so in my view, you know, quite a few banks will do it. Some banks will just go back to their old ways, you know, actually, and mm -hmm. do what they're doing. But I think the guys who are going to survive and thrive will have to do something. They cannot hope that, you know, the world will just revert back to the mean. That's not going to happen. Right. The because the customers are not going to want to meet a relationship manager. They don't want to come to a branch anymore. So I think the customers have got more demanding than even the banks today, you know, for the right. Right. And that's, I agree. That's certainly going to be driving. I think the, the bank's behavior will be driven by their customers and they'll say, no, we want, we want a we want a digital solution here. We, we want it to be, to be quicker and easier. So we don't have yeah. to go into a branch. Yeah. I think the biggest change can happen if like the PPP program where the treasury allowed fintechs to come directly. If, if, if SBA and treasury allows some of these fintech players to also become direct SBA 7A lenders, then the there'll be a huge paradigm shift in the in the market you know because right. then a lot of these traditional lenders will be massively forced to actually do something very quickly right that is very true because i know i know like i'm like funding circle for example i know they've yes. been trying to be an sba lender for year for a couple of years now and yep. uh hopefully that will be one of the outcomes here where yep. you know that's what i'm hoping also yeah exactly yeah. yes because because that will be the biggest change in the market because my fear otherwise is that you know banks are talking about going digital but i know you know their their habits are very hard to change you know and and they can at, you know actually keep going back to the same thing or do some half half digitization or something some banks will do it but a lot of them might not just you know pay much attention to it when this crisis ends you know right right well i certainly hope that most of the fintechs end up being approved here. So we're almost out of time. Just a couple of questions. So I'd love to get a sense. Now it's been several years since we've been on the show. So um, what, what's, tell us, um, particularly before the crisis maybe, because I know the last three months have not been very typical, or the last two months especially. So um, what, what scale are you guys at today? How, um, how, how big is biz to credit when it comes to like originations these days? Yeah, so in terms of origination, we were tracking this year prior to the crisis of doing between 600, 600 to 700 million dollars in origination you know we have been i would say more of a patient player than trying to do billions of dollars and then right what the consequences are you know uh, uh, my my take on that is that once the markets come back we should be able to you know if not this year but by early next year able to hit those numbers or even exceed those numbers because uh, the demand is going to come back very strong you know when whenever it comes back and the competition has actually you know reduced so, so from that side, you know, 600 to 700 million, we have also invested a lot of money in our technology and data science. So we are up now to 350 people as a company. Mm -hmm. We have grown very profitably over the years. Uh, uh, and uh, so and we have a lot of, you know, good li liquidity right now. You know, we are like last year, we raised a series B of $52 million. Uh, yeah. So all the money is still in the bank and, uh, and more. So, so the idea has been now is that we are investing very heavily on the technology and data science side, we just hired a few people because the good news now is that there's a lot of very high quality talent really available, you know, right. mm -hmm. and so we have, uh, we are doing that, you know, and we have also become more comfortable in hiring remotely, which, which obviously we were not that comfortable. <laughs> I don't think anyone was comfortable really before this crisis. So. Exactly. So I think that has helped us also as a company to grow. And I foresee that, you know, if we keep growing in a disciplined manner, you know, then best to credit, you know, I think we were among one of the bigger players, but not among the biggest, you know, earlier. Right. I think next year to two, we could be one of the largest players and a very large player on the best to X side also, because I, I strongly feel there's a convergence happening uh, between the technology, data science and the credit markets and the whole behavior, both of the customers and the lenders will see a paradigm shift. I think we are moving towards finally it, it, it can happen in US 
by default is the open banking and this whole other stuff will start coming in because of this crisis. You know? Right, right. Okay, then. So it sounds like you're going to you're looking to sort of expand market share. Are you are you going to look at potentially any M and A with you know, with some of your distressed competitors? You is that something that's, that's on your question. radar? We are actually getting a lot of inbound queries right now, you know, as we speak uh, from uh, from some of the distressed players. You know, so uh, yeah, we are looking at some of them very closely. Obviously, it's a little bit tricky because you know if portfolios are are not performing well, then you have to be very careful. Right. Uh, but but at the same point of time, yes, we are seeing a lot of inbound queries and and we are looking at few of them because I I strongly feel that you know we were very patient earlier and we were growing in a very disciplined manner and now it's our time to you know uh, start growing uh, in a in a still in a very disciplined manner but at a much faster pace. Now. Right. Right. Okay. Well, we'll have to leave it there, Rohit. Uh, good luck. Uh, I very much appreciate you coming on the show today. Yeah. And thank you for your time. Okay. okay. See Pleasure. ya. Bye.